I want to do a quick video on driving uh, in the Outer Banks, specifically the Corova area, which is the four-wheel drive area, the most north you can go in the Outer Banks. It's right by the Virginia border. It's after a town called Corolla, not Corolla, Corolla. And um, they don't, and even though it's spelled like Corolla, it's Corolla, like coral, like coral reef. And I have a cheat sheet here. This is my top five things. And this is basically like a beginner's guide. The first thing is, is that it, you can do it. Right? That's really the first thing that you need to know is if you have a four wheel drive car, you're going to be okay. This sand is very, very forgiving. It's, it's easy to easy sand to drive on. Even the softest, even the softest sand can be driven on. My friend Jamie's and, and his wife were up here with us. I'm here with my wife and my son, and they have a Honda Ridge line that has highway tires on it. And they air down, and it's fine. I mean, it really is fine. It's then these tires, they're new highway tires, but they are highway tires. As far as airing down is concerned, you really need to air down. It's just, it's like the law out here. And a lot of people are like, oh, how much air down? How much air down? Look at the door sticker and just do 50%. And that's a good, that's a good baseline. If you got to go a little bit lower, you go a little bit lower. But 50% uh, of the door, whatever it says on the door, that's a good, that, that's a good number. But basically, you can do it. Trust me, you can do it. Let's talk about number two. Uh, number two is driving closer to the ocean is is going to be better. It's going to be easier to drive when it's closer to the ocean. Why? Because the sand's going to be more compacted. It's going to be smoother. There's not going to be a lot of ruts, but you don't want to go too far, obviously, because then it actually gets softer and then you start getting into water and you don't want to deal with that. But when you're driving north, it works just like a road. You're on the right side. Just because you're going south, if there's no cars coming, you can be on the left side closer to the ocean. If there's no cars coming, there's no cars coming. It's not really a big deal. Uh, technically speaking, should you be driving on the left side? No, but it's not really a big deal and everybody does it uh, just to avoid the soft sand. So closer to the ocean is better. Don't go too far. That's really all you need to know about that. Third, high tide. High tide can be a little bit intimidating because clearly there's less of the beach to drive on. And it means you're going to have to drive closer to the dunes, which means it's softer up there. It's, it's just the way it is. You want to keep your momentum when you're driving on the softer part. You can still do it. And momentum doesn't mean speed. There's two different things here. Momentum and speed. Speed is like you're gassing it and like you're trying to power through things. That can hurt you. That can hurt traction. You, you just want to keep your momentum going. When you can go a little bit faster, you don't want to really go over the speed limit. The speed limit's only 15 miles an hour. You can go 20 or so. But I've seen people pulled over. I was pulled over a few years ago. Uh, he let me go. It was very nice. But, but yeah, you can get pulled over. So momentum through the soft parts is what you need. Get the speed when you can and, and just press on that gas just enough to, to keep your momentum. You'd be surprised how much traction, how much traction you're going to get with with 50% less air in your tires, and you're going the speed limit. It, it honestly, 10, 15 miles an hour, you would be surprised at how your car just keeps on going. The fourth thing is is that um, the farther north you go, the softer it's going to be. And why is that? It's because there's not a lot of people up there compacting that sand. You're going to see you go halfway through Corova, and it's going to be like, hmm, yeah, it's getting a little soft here. You can still do it, but it's softer. I guess the fifth thing is really kind of tied into the fourth thing is, is that you don't need to drive on the beach. There's many roads inside the beach area, right, where all the houses are, that you can go in. If you feel like it's too soft for you and you're getting nervous, make the next turn. Exit the beach and just drive on a regular main road where cars are always, always driving on, and it's going to be better. I guess I should point out, though, is maybe this is number six. I guess this is the top six thing, is that exiting the beach probably going to be the hardest thing that you do because it's going to be an incline, and people are tearing up that thing so it's a little bit softer. You want to make sure that you have your momentum going before you try and exit. And the next thing is sometimes those roads, they can be... The exits can be really steep and you can't see what's happening on the other side. People here 
they don't have flags on their cars. A flag is basically something that's it's going to stick up really high and you can see it. You see it a lot in dune, in like dune buggies. Dune buggies, when you're driving around in the dunes, they'll have a really tall flag on there. You won't see that around here. Listen, if you're really scared about that and you've got another person with you, have them get out and just go to the top and just wave you on when it's clear. There's no shame in it. You want to be safe? You got your kid in the car or something like that? I totally understand it. Just do it. Uh, it's not really a big deal. But yeah, you want to keep your momentum. You, you, you want to give it a little gas. And if you know no one's coming, it's going to be a lot, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get that gas and zip up that hill. You're going to feel a little more confident. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. And as long as you take the right precautions, the, the airing down, I think you got to bring a shovel. A tow strap, I don't think you need a tow strap. I don't think that's in the rules, but you want to have a shovel and you want to air down 50%. And parking, I guess here's another thing. It goes against logic, but you have to park in the middle. It's like you're parking in the median, almost. Your brain is gonna tell you, I'm gonna go all the way closest to the dunes and give everybody the most road possible to drive on. No, you park in the middle. It doesn't make any sense, but those are the rules. You're gonna see some signs, park in the middle. Just be careful, because people are gonna be going by on either side. If you're on one side of the car and you don't realize it, you know, you're not paying attention, the ocean's loud. You could walk to the other side of the car, somebody could zip right by you. So you gotta be careful, but you gotta park in the middle. The next thing is, is that during the main time of the year, as this is a rule as of 2018, you need a parking permit to park on the beach. It's like 150 bucks if you're non-resident. If you're a resident, obviously you're probably not watching this, but if you're a resident, you don't need a parking permit. But if you are a tourist, you're from another state, um, and actually, if you're, don't quote me on this, but I think you actually need to be in the outer banks to be able to park without a permit. You don't need a driving permit though. You can drive on the beach. You can enter Corova, drive to a house that you're renting and then drive out of there. But if you wanna park during you know Memorial Day, Labor Day area, you need a permit. All right, everyone, I hope, uh, hope that helped you out. See ya.